Good morning. Welcome to Mount Vernon Baptist Church. We're excited to be here in the house of the Lord. There's so many things happening today that are really special. In just a little while, we're going to be honoring and recognizing our high school and our college graduates. Um, so you be prayerfully uh, waiting for that. I hope you are prayerfully waiting for that. Um, for those of you that are joining us for the first time this morning here in the room or e either uh, tuning in or looking in online, we just want to say good morning and welcome. That God is good and that he loves you and his desire is for you to know him personally and you can have a personal relationship with him. So listen to the message today as scripture's read, read along with it, think about it, let the Lord speak to your heart because today may be the day that you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. Enter into the family of the fellowship. Some of us are gathered here and some of us are gathered there. But the main thing is that the Spirit of God binds us together. So we're happy that you're here. Visitors in the room with us today, you could do me a favor. Um, uh, later on as you go out, maybe we can get some information from you. If, if you're visiting, just grab one of us as you see us and, and, um, and say hey so we can get to know you a little bit. Uh, to those of you tuning in at home, if you go to nvbc.com, you'll find a way there to fill out a visitor form or ask questions of the, the staff or anything about ministry uh, questions. We would love to, to get those from you. Prayer requests, anything that you have, we'd love to hear from you and communicate with you and for you at home and you here today too. Um, Giving. Giving is always an option, and so it's a sweet thing for those of you that are here today. There are um, giving buckets at the back door. As you walk by, you can drop your offerings in there. You can still go to mvbc.com and give online. Uh, there's also a P.O. box. If you'll go to mvbc.com, it'll tell you the, the address to mail to that. What I want to do right this morning, though, is pray, and then we're going to have um, pomp and circumstance. We're going to stand up and, and greet our, our graduates. So many of our graduates um, were not able to, to walk at their high schools or have regular graduation because of all that's happening in this world with COVID and schools closing down. And we want to make a big deal about them. They put a lot of effort and hard work and prayer into the last many years of finishing school. Their parents are happy for them. And as a family of God and in this church, we're excited. We're excited for them to continue to grow and grow in the Lord. So um, let's pray together, and then let's welcome our graduates. Father God, we love you, and we thank you so much for loving us. Your word promises us that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And yet in this world, Lord, with all the turmoil and all the uncertainty, um, all the lack of peace, Lord, those things come because they're apart from you. Lord, any person that has uh, given their hearts and lives to you, that surrenders their life to you, Lord, and, and lets you be the Lord and the master and the boss of their life, Lord, you have promised that you will come into them with your spirit, that you will give them peace of heart and peace of mind and direction. Thank you for your written word, the Bible, Lord, that we can open up and know what you think and know how you feel and how we are to live and how we're to do and how we're to love others. We want to do just that. Father, we're thankful for this day and this time of celebration for these graduates. And so I pray that every heart and every person in this room would be preparing our minds and our hearts for this message that we're going to hear, for the scripture that we're going to hear, the songs that we're going to sing, and Lord, the worshiping and the fellowshipping we're going to do together. It is sweet. Lord, be honored and glorified in everything we say and do today. We love you and we thank you, and I pray all of this in the name of Jesus. And amen. be seated. 
At this time, I'm going to announce the uh, high school graduates. Uh, they're going to come to the microphone and share with you where they're graduating from, and they're also going to tell you what their future plans are. And we need you to listen carefully to that because we want you praying for them. Uh, as some of them leave and go off to college or some of them remain here in the area, they still need prayer and they need our care. So listen carefully to what they're, what they're saying about where they're graduating from, where they're going. Uh, as I finish up, then Brother David is going to announce the college and um, the graduates there, and he'll have a, a closing prayer. So first I want to announce to you Ms. Jana Harrison. Um, hi, I'm Jana Harrison. I graduated from Millbrook High School, and I'll be attending Wake Tech in their emergency medicine program. Miss Blessing Moo. Hi, I'm Blessing. Um, I will be graduating from the North Carolina School of Science and Math, and I will be attending UNC Chapel Hill in the fall uh, as a prospective global studies and business administration double major. Mr. David Phillips. I'm David. I'm graduating from Wakefield High School. I'm going to UNC Charlotte to study engineering. Ms. Tabitha Sams. I'm graduating from home and I'll be attending Western Carolina University in the fall to study criminology. Ms. Samantha Simmons. I'm Samantha Simmons. I'll be, I'm graduating from North Carolina Cyber Academy, and I'll be going to Wake Tech in the fall to discover my career path. And Ms. Abigail Streit. My, my name is Abigail, and I'm graduating from homeschool, and I'm going to Wake Tech to study sonography. All right, well, that's exciting, and we're looking forward to having all of you in Coffee House uh, very soon. Uh, we have six graduates uh, from, uh, from college, and they are in the bulletin, which is online, if, if you'd like to, to look that up. We have four of them here today and have a little gift for them. So first up will be Blessy Sam. Hi, my name is Blessy Sam, and I graduated from Liberty University um, doing interdisciplinary studies. I'm going to Southeastern Seminary to do biblical counseling. <laughs> All right, next up is Ms. Tori McManus. Hello, good morning. My name is Tori. I graduated last December from Wake Tech with my Associates of Arts, and I will be moving to Greensboro to study communications at UNCG this fall. And next we have Miss Sweetie Sam. Hi, I'm Sweetie. I graduated with my master's in Christian education from Southeastern. I will be starting to work in preschool this fall. Thank you. And finally, we have Miss Ayana McCoy. Good morning. My name is Ayana McCoy. I graduated from Fayetteville State University with my Bachelor's of Science in Elementary Education. I have accepted a first grade teaching position at Lillian, Lillian Black Elementary School, which is about an hour from here. So if you guys could all just continue to pray for me on this new journey that I will actually be starting tomorrow <laughs> as I move. Um, you guys have all been such a light in this long journey that I've been on, and I just want to thank each and every single one of you. Um, if you could also continue to pray for my students, I will be working in um, very low income areas with a lot of broken homes, a lot of broken hearts, so just continue to pray for those as well. I just want to say a couple of things before we pray for, for all of these graduates. Uh, you know, in the, in the book of Genesis that, that records the, the beginnings of, uh, of humanity, 
It says that God blessed them, the man and the woman. And he said, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion over the earth, over the fish of the sea and the bird of the heaven and every living thing that moves on the earth. He put the man and the woman in the garden to, to cultivate it, to work it and keep it. Uh, the, the Hebrew words are, are the same words that are used of the Levites' duties at the tabernacle. See, the work that God gives us to do, the, the, the great calling that he puts on each of your lives... Your vocation, it comes from the Latin uh, vocate, it means to call. That call he puts on your life is an act of worship for each of you. You you don't have to, to go to seminary or be a preacher or a pastor or a missionary to be on mission and and to live out the great calling that God has put on your life. So I charge you with that to live every day. Every day is an act of worship. When you study, you're worshiping God. The way you go about your job, you are worshiping God. You are proclaiming His glory and bearing His image in the world. So let's pray for them as they do that because we need Christians in every area of human endeavor. Be salt, be light, we're for you, we're with you, and go with God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you uh, for these graduates. Lord, we thank you for the work you've already done in their life, for the great calling, the great work that you have prepared for each of them. You tell us that that if we're saved, we are your workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works that you have prepared beforehand for us to do. So help these as they work through your calling on their life. Grant them wisdom and discernment and discretion. Give them kind hearts and sharp minds, charity of spirit they might go and do and be everything that you want them to, to the praise of your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have another round of applause for all of our graduates. We come together as a church, whether it's here, whether it's at your home, wherever you might be right now, we come together to worship Christ Jesus, who is named in Ephesians chapter 2 as the chief cornerstone. In Him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. So as we sing, we're welcoming Jesus not to this, to this building that we're in, but we're welcoming Him to our hearts. For those of us who have trusted in Him, let's all stand together as we sing. Let our praise
moving power Let what's dead come to life We are here for you We are here for you To you our hearts are open Nothing here is hidden You are our one desire your fire fall down. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Let it fall. Let it fall, sing it now. We welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise, we welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul away. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Be welcomed in this place. Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. shall be 
darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To fulfill the kingdom coming and to reconcile the loss, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. heaven held its breath till that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the father are restored and the church of Christ was born and was filled with the flame Shall not kneel, shall not faint. Why you flooded in his name? In his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. It's so good to see each one of you. Thank you for being here today. And for our graduates, we praise the Lord for such a wonderful group of folks. Uh, as you recognize each week, I kind of give you an update on who has died and who's living. Uh, so I've got one of each today. 
this week we had May Whaley pass away. May was a member here back in the 50s, and uh, she was 88 years of age. Her son, Don, was an evangelist, and some of you remember, he would sit right down here about the third row, and he was blind, but he could tear a piano all to pieces. And then he spoke with it. He was quite a musician. We had him here a number of times. Uh, great, great man of God. Some of his kinfolk lived over here in the uh, Bent Tree Shopping Center. That was their farm. Uh, but uh, Miss Whaley had uh, several godly men. And what a legacy. As you know, they probably can't have a funeral or anything, but uh, legacy is in her children. Now, Don, her son, has already died. Uh, so she outlived her son. But uh, the influence, godly influence, is still there. Now to the living. Miss Mary Davis, 99 years old tomorrow. Come on. Yes, she is our oldest church member. <laughs> she used to sit back about where the camera is uh, each Sunday, and she is in a home in Roseville. She sends word. If any of you got a hacksaw, bring it. She wants to get out. <laughs> it is awful today to live like that, but she cannot talk with her children or anyone. And she says, I don't know what I did to deserve being locked up like this. Uh, we praise the Lord for her. We sent word to her that we were going to celebrate today her 99th birthday. So we are very thankful to have her living at 99. Some of you keep working at it. Maybe you'll get there as well. But she is far in the lead. Today we are very privileged to have our reader. And you know, we are studying about Isaac. So today... This is our second Isaac. We, we're privileged to have more than one in our church. But today we have the privilege of having Isaac to read the scripture about Isaac. And so he's going to tell us what to do now. Please stand. We're reading uh, Genesis 26, 19 through 26. Chapter 25, 20, 19 through 26. This is the genealogy of Isaac. Abraham's son, or Abraham's son, Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as wife, the daughter of Bethul, the Syrian of Padan, around the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled to get together within her, and this, she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire the, of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the, olders, the older shall serve the younger. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So he, his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Thank you, Isaac. You may be seated. Last week when we saw Isaac, he was... 40 years old and get married. Today we look at him and he's 60 years old. Uh, so we're jumping a little bit in time. Chapter 25 gives a little background about him and his life. And uh, Abraham, you know, his wife Sarah died. And so now we find that Abraham's marrying again. <laughs> uh, the last we saw in chapter 24 
Isaac was marrying Sarah and they were there in the same tent where his mother was. Well, now somewhere along the line, Abraham gets married again and marries Ketua, has six more children. Now, as we look at uh, Isaac, <laughs> somewhere along the line, he moves and he moves to a whole nother area. Uh, we find it in verse 11, Bir Halurai is where he moves to a well, which is about 60 miles. If you remember Beersheba, where they located, it's down at the bottom near the Dead Sea. And that's where Abraham has been with Isaac. Now he moves to 60 miles west uh, near the Mediterranean Sea in that direction. This happens to be the very same place where Hagar, when her ma master Sarah treated her so bad, ran away and there God met her. Uh, that name of that well means the Lord sees me where I am. And you know what? The Lord does see us where we are. We're all uh, right now asking the questions. And I'm thinking as you graduates are asking the questions. So what am I going to do now? What's the future going to be like? And I know so many of you are saying, I just want things to be back like they used to be. That's a great thought. Probably will never happen. Uh, we're living in a different world. Graduates, uh, when I went to school, I graduated from Wake County Public Schools and uh, I graduated in 65. Uh, there was no integration. We were segregated. Uh, my wife went the next year. She graduated the next year. It was integrated. Whole different story. So our schools were totally segregated. I went to college, uh, Campbell which is a Christian school. It was segregated. I went to the Southeastern Seminary. It was segregated. What does I mean by that? There was nothing but white people. Times changed. Marching was going on in our colleges and our universities. That was going on when I was there. It's a different day. Recently, I was privileged to get to know one of my neighbors down in my home. A dear black brother lived less than a mile from my house. We started talking and, and I realized, wow, he knows so much that I know. And I asked him, how old are you? <laughs> and I found out we were both the same age. And so we started talking and I realized, wow, I missed this dear brother just down the road because my school did not allow anybody but white people. And I so missed well, you know what? I've enjoyed getting to know him now and I'm looking forward to continuing as long as God gives us. Knowing my dear brother, we got to talk about his school and my school and, and I happen to knew his, know his principal because he took papers from my paper route and, and we just enjoyed it. And I learned so many good things and I thought, wow, I missed out. Well, what are we going to have for the future? I still contend get to know as many people, different people as you can. It is a blessing and a joy to get to know different folks. So what's the future going to hold? We better go with God. We better trust God. As I heard uh, Miss Alana sharing about where she's going and working, and praise God for it. Uh, <laughs> I preached a revival down there, Alana. <laughs> and uh, it's a tough area. And it, it lets me know, wow, I'm going to be praying for Alana and the rest of them in the different places they go because I realize we're going to need God. Uh, we left that place and uh, uh, we were on wheels. That means our, we were on our RV and I was praising God. I was on wheels and glad to get out of there. <laughs> but you know what? We need missionaries in these places. And so let's pray for them. And, and I believe some of these are probably going to be going overseas and serving God when those doors open again. So we need to pray for every one of these. All right, what is the message we're going to get today? Well, Abraham, uh, he had six children. <laughs> and I, I take it that's probably the reason that uh, <laughs> Isaac left and, and moved 60 miles out. Uh, but then eventually came back home. 
But in the first part of this chapter, we find that Abraham does something I think is important. He gives each one of his children gifts and then sends them out. Those six children he had, he sent them uh, to the uh, east and they took care of, uh, they were part of Saudi Arabia. And, he, and what he was saying is he gave them gifts and then he said, you know, uh, Isaac, this is his home. He, this is where he's going to stay. And so uh, uh, he did it while he was living, didn't wait till he died. And then later we find he has a funeral and at 75, Isaac and Ishmael, who's 89, come together to bury their daddy in the same place where mama was buried. But now we get to our text that Isaac read so beautifully for us today. And, and when we get there, we find that uh, Isaac, Abraham is still living. He's not dead yet. And uh, he's had those six children. And we find that Isaac now has been married for 20 years. And we find a little verse that he says about him. Isaac prays for children. Now, friend, it doesn't matter what we're facing in life. Pray about it. That's my word. Graduates, what's the key for the future? Prayer. Pray. 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 Right now, you're getting ready to face some of the greatest decisions you're ever going to make in your life. And the key is to pray. Now, have you noticed how many times in the scripture people prayed for children? Abraham prayed for children. Isaac's praying for children. And Rachel later will pray for children. <laughs> Elizabeth prayed for children. <laughs> Jesus, uh, Mary didn't pray for children. God told her, you're going to have a baby. And then she prayed. <laughs> Uh, what I'm saying is in your life, sometimes you have to pray for children. And then sometimes God just gives you children. And then you pray like Mary. And you pray, Lord, what am I supposed to do? Uh, prayer is the key. Whatever you face, I wonder how long they prayed. <laughs> they were married 20 years before they had a child. So they may have been praying for 20 years. Prayer makes a difference. You and your Sunday school lesson, you've been uh, learning in Proverbs about how important it is to go with God. Friend, God's got a plan for you. Go with the Lord. Every trial, every difficulty. Some of you may be wondering, what am I going to do? What school am I going to do? What, what job am I going to do? Some of you had that prayer. All right, ask God for it. First of all, ask the Lord to come in your heart, give your life to Him, and then pray and watch God lead. I've been able to watch now, it's uh, 53 years of pastoring, uh, several honorary doctorates given to me, uh, watching what God's done here. And I'll say, for the future, have no idea what God's going to do. I had no idea what He's going to do now. One of the things they tell you, keep learning. Don't quit learning. Continue learning. I've learned so many things and so much of our, our staff has. We've, we've been all stretched in directions like you wouldn't believe. But it's rather exciting. Learning and doing different things, different ways, and trying to find out what's going on. And nobody seems to know the answer. Uh, I know somebody I can trust. And that's the Lord Jesus. And you can too. No matter what you're facing now, what difficulty, what challenge, trust God. Pray. Ask God. And so that's the first thing we find that he's doing is praying for children. And God gives, it may, he may have had to wait 20 years. Listen, when you pray, God says, yes, no, later. <laughs> and for this prayer, and many prayers I prayed, God say, you got to wait. Learn to wait and obey the Lord. Now, there's another problem. <laughs> His wife has a baby. Well, 
Now we find in the scripture and in verse 22, she's praying again. <laughs> because there is something going on inside of you. Now, guys, we don't know what's going on. The women, you know uh, some of that feeling. Well, uh, she realizes, boy, something's going on inside of me that hmm, I don't know about this. <laughs> and so she prays and asks God, God, what on earth is happening inside of me? Life begins at conception. I don't care what, what science of today is saying. Life begins when there's conception. And there's personalities going on. And so God tells her, you're going to have two nations inside you. Wow. And, and they're battling they're going to be fighting. And, he goes, and the angel says, and you know what? Uh, one's going to be stronger than the other. One's going to be older, but he's not going to be the strongest. God, how do you know this? <laughs> Friend, God knows about every single one of us. He knows about our life. I wonder how many... Dear great people of God have been destroyed. It may be the very person that would have been able to conquer the coronavirus has already been killed by people. No wonder we're struggling and not knowing what to do. Every person God has a plan for. And so she prays and God gives her the answer. And then in these next verses... I tell you, the Bible, it gets pretty uh, unique and strong. Uh, it talks about things that people don't usually like to talk about. And that's childbirth. <laughs> and so we find uh, in these next few verses that he talks about the uniqueness of every person. You see, friend, God's got a plan for every single person in the world. And so God had a plan for Esau. And he tells about him, about how he was born. Uh, my wife soon found after we were married, we were refinishing antique furniture in the backyard and my sander slipped and hit her ear and caught, cut it and started bleeding. And I told her I'll run in the house and I'll get some uh, bandages and, and we'll fix that up. Well, after a little while, she decides to come in the house and find out what's happened. <laughs> there I am laid out, passed out. I just saw the blood and that's all it took and I couldn't handle any more. So she realized I was going to be of very little help in that area. And, and this business of childbirth is something that uh, some of us, we really don't want to know a whole lot about it. Um, and yet the scripture is pretty pretty strong on it. Uh, we, this week I'm supposed to have been in uh, Orlando at our convention, and I love going to the conventions. One of the few I've had to miss in my lifetime. Uh, and one of the reasons I like to go because I get to see people that I've known in the past. And some, one family that I always get to see are some Filipinos. We had some Filipinos in our church years ago. A whole group had moved here to Raleigh. And so we had a congregation, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful folks. I love them. And I like to see them. And we renew and talk about things. And I, I, I'm not going to get to see them this year. Beautiful people, wonderful people. Um, but one of their children was being born. And they said, Pastor, we want you to come and dedicate our child to the Lord. And we want you to come to our house. And we're going to have some refreshments and we're going to show the video of the childbirth. And, I, you know, I thought about that and I thought, you know, I really, I don't even see my own. And I don't want to see anybody else's. And I'll never forget driving on North Hills Drive Road to Crabtree where they were living. And I prayed. I prayed, God, I don't want to see such a thing. So... Would you do something, please? 
And I tell you, listen, God answers prayer. Their VCR, you all don't know what that means, but a VCR wouldn't work. And they apologized. I was probably smiling because I was trying to laugh and say, thank you, God. I didn't want to see that. Well, when we look in the scripture, <laughs> God just wants us to see this thing. And so he says, all right, there's Esau. He comes out. Wow. That's what the scripture says. He comes out all red and hairy. I like seeing when babies are born and just see what they look like. Uh, they're so different. I, I'm always interested in hair uh, because some do come with a lot of hair. Uh, very different. And God's already let us know. Now this one, first one, they're going to call him Harry. I'm, I'm, I'm Esau, which Esau means Harry. So if you see somebody Harry, you, okay. There must be a reason they called you that. Um, he's, his nickname is Edom. Edom means red. So you kind of got a picture of what this little fellow looks like. God knows about him. He's already told, told uh, you know, he's going to be a nation. But you need to know uh, that he's not going to be the strongest. And so Isaac and Rachel know, or Rebecca know, who he is. And so they name him. God's already said what he's going to be like. Friend, God knows about every person born. And some of you in your life now may be looking and you're wondering, uh, What's this child going to be like? I, I love watching the children. Uh, my wife and I have kind of, uh, we've already, from our experience and others, we, watch and one that we watched the other week, and I think I just heard that one. Uh, just couldn't help but uh, keep the little feet jerking all the time. Well, you know, that gives a little indication. All right. We kind of remember that. <laughs> uh, uh, listen, God's got something going. You watch them when they're really, really small all the way through. God's got something going in every life. And so it doesn't matter where you are in your life, God's got something going for you. All right, next we see the next baby comes out. <laughs> and the scripture says this next one comes out grabbing the heel of the older one. Wow, what a picture! Uh, you got to watch that one. He, well, why don't we just call him heel grabber? So that's what Jacob means. Uh, you often call children by name of uh, something what you recognize in them uh, in their early days. And so he's called a, well, heel grabber means somebody's going to trip somebody else. You, you got to watch them. They're always trying to scheme. You know, real faith doesn't have to scheme to get things done. Real faith just trusts God. And let me recommend to you, friend, as, as you're facing the trials of life and what we're going to do next, trust God. Pray first. Ask God, God, what is it you got going for my life? God has got a plan for every one of us. These are just babies. Jacob is 60 years old. I mean, uh, Isaac is 60 years old. And he's got a baby. God already knows. God's got a plan. And friend, for every one of our lives, God has got a plan for us too. He's got a plan for you. What is going to happen in these days? Where are we going to be? <laughs> uh, you know, I see all of you spread out today. And I'm thinking, wow, if we build again, I've got a new idea of how to do it. In fact, you know, if we took out half the pews, wouldn't it be neat? You could have a recliner. Some of you are saying, uh, you know, you so enjoy reclining in your chair at home. Well, hey, we could do it now. 
have big recliners laid out all over. The, I think it'd be absolutely wonderful. They tell us fresh air is good. I think it'd be great if we could just build a building next and have all the walls just pop up and pop down when you need them. Oh, there's so many things we could do in these days. Where is this thing going to go? I don't have any idea, but I know who we can trust. We can trust the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. He says, God says to Jeremiah, you know my thoughts for you. They're not thoughts of evil, but of good and peace. I've got a plan for you. And it's not to treat you wrong. So many people are thinking they've got to stand up and defend themselves. Listen, friend, God's got a plan for every one of us. And He's not got a plan to hurt us. You can trust the Lord. Psalms, one, uh, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. You, remember it says, Blessed is the man that walks in the righteousness of the Lord, whose delight is in the Lord. And he says, you know, he'll be like a tree planted beside the living, beside rivers of water. Let me recommend to you, walk with God. First pray to him and know he's got a plan for you. It's going to be good. You can trust him. Give your life to him. Jacob, Esau, Ishmael, Isaac. Each of these have been examples of one who lived for the world and one that lived for God. Ishmael lived for the world, Isaac for God. Esau for the world, Jacob for God. How about you, friend? This point in your life right now, you're making a decision. Are you going to live for God or live for the world? I tell you, you walk with God. It'll be a blessed life. Some of us have been around a long time to try it. I'm going to tell you, it's worth it to walk with God. Give your life to Him. So right now, all right, as I go forth, I'm going to go with God. You do that, will you? Let's pray. And dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us and knowing us. Oh, Lord, uh, Isaac wasn't all right, and Abraham wasn't all right, and Jacob wasn't all right, but you loved them and used them. And Lord, we're not all right. There's problems with us. But thank you for using people like us who are bad, done things wrong, but you have a heart for us and you love us. And Lord, we want to let you know we love you and want to commit ourselves to you, to obey you and to follow you. We want that life that's a blessing, that doesn't come by accident, but by plan of God. And so come in my heart, Lord. Lead me on. I'll follow you wherever you lead. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand. This is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget. That though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you leave here, a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. One Bible school begins this week.
And I don't know whether you've been keeping up with what we've been doing for Bible school or not, but uh, throughout this week, about 50 boxes were delivered to homes, and about 80 to 90 children will be opening those boxes beginning tomorrow, and they'll have their Bible school week at home. So be praying for that effort and for those children that will be opening those boxes this week. Also, don't forget on your way out, there are the baskets that if you'd like to give your offering, you can drop those in the baskets. So let's pray as we leave here today. Father, we praise you. We thank you for this opportunity that we've had to come back together to worship you corporately, Lord. And we just pray as we leave here that uh, you will remain on our hearts, on our minds, that uh, even though we don't understand all that's going on around us, Lord, that we'll place our trust in you, that we'll lean upon you to guide us and direct us, that uh, this week we would lift up the name of Jesus in everything we say and in everything we do. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.